Oh, hi. I have to admit I've been doing maritime reading and not my Christmas list, and I'll, I'll hope you know that it's very difficult for me to find the perfect gift for you. So I thought maybe a Christmas story would be the best way to do it. And this is a good one. This is about the Christmas tree ships. And of course, the, the melding of the German tradition of Christmas evergreens into the United States has been told in many forms since 1850. Newspapers nationwide credited woodsman Mark Carr with chopping the first commercial trees, towing them down the Catskill Mountains in two sleds to offer them for a dollar in New York City. Chicago lore is that August Schooneman teamed up with Captain Arthur E. Dow to bring the first commercial shipment into Chicago in 1876, using the scow Lady Ellen to haul 2,000 trees up the river. Newly illuminated in lights, the river was the perfect place to attract buyers, and by 1897, August was bringing in 20,000 trees, selling them on an antiquated barge called the Rising Star. Soon Captain Dow had his own ships and by 1904, a half dozen captains were bringing tannenbaums and mossy lycopodium to the river during the holidays. August's brother Herman was also getting into the game, sailing the George L. Wren in as early as 1887. He would become a favorite of buyers and the local newspapers loved him. He had several full-page stories about his adventures and wreath-making team each December, and the dangers of his trips were often highlighted. The reality of November Gales became all too real when August Schooneman was killed with a load of Christmas trees in 1898. He and his crew were lost. They had nearly made it to Chicago when the ship broke apart. Herman Schooneman would also lose a ship in October of 1900, sailing the old Mary Collins, which had been used as a Christmas tree ship for 17 years. He barely got six miles out of Manistique when the winds pushed him aground and then ripped his ship apart. That same season, the Christmas tree ship Vermont was lost at Garden Bay. The ship was nearly 50 years old. The crew of the Caledonia lost a crewman to the storm that ended the career of their ship in November of 1901. And a late November gale in 1906 finally caught up with one of the first captains to bring trees to Chicago. The schooner La Brabita crashed ashore 40 miles east of Manistee. Captain Arthur Dow said he escaped with only a bundle of dirty clothes, but he and his small crew made it ashore. 10,000 trees and a 75-foot ship were lost forever. In 1908, Herman Schooneman was nearly killed on the Wren in a storm, and that next season he told reporters he was now sailing on the Birth of Barnes. Known as Captain Santa, he was creeping ahead of the competition, hinting a possible shortage of trees because forest fires had limited his yearly harvest, and he was worried, quote, the kiddos wouldn't get a tree this year, close quote. That next season, Schooneman bought into the schooner Rouse Simmons, which had a long life on the lakes as a lumber carrier and was named for the brother of mattress magnate Zalman Simmons. That same year, he took on a crewman that had survived the sinking of the Pear Marquette 18 just months earlier. Tragically, John Olson had a massive heart attack on board the Simmons that fall, dying in his bunk near Algoma. In 1911, competition really picked up by rail as Harms and Schuber had 10 train cars of trees for sale on nearby South Water Street. The Upper Peninsula of Michigan was once the primary source for trees, but locomotives now made it possible to ship from a seemingly limitless crop in Maine and Vermont. Captain Santa admitted he left Thompson, Michigan in a full gale warning, pushing south to make it home for his twin daughter's birthdays. He pulled into the canal at Sturgeon Bay instead, making good on a promise to his family that he would notify them when he was safe. Let joy in the household be unconfined, he sent to his family by messenger. He later pulled into his berth at the Clark Street Bridge with 15,000 trees. Captain Santa had another skipper aboard for his final run in 1912. Captain Charles Nelson joined the crew and several of the lumberjacks hitched a ride south as the Rouse Simmons untied from the dock at Thompson and headed home. The November 22nd forecast was brisk southwest winds, but that changed as a disturbance developed intensity as it hit Lake Michigan that afternoon. Storm warnings were posted by 8 a.m. the next day with snow or rain expected, and the low quickly descended from North Dakota into Lower Lake Michigan. The Rouse Simmons plowed through the storm, lowering part of their sails and eventually hoisting a distress flag as they approached Kewanee, Wisconsin. At 3.10 in the afternoon, the 10-year veteran keeper at Kewanee made a decision that would change his career forever. 
He didn't have a motorized surf boat, and he saw the three-masted schooner was five miles from shore, pushing southward. He picked up the telephone to message Two Rivers Life Saving Station to send their motorized boat to help. Captain Sogg set out as the storm blew itself out. He found nothing. Reports of floating Christmas trees near Two Rivers confirmed the Schunemans family's worst fears. Herman and Captain Nelson and some 14 crew were lost forever. Three bottles came ashore over the next few months. One allegedly from Captain Santa was found December 13th. Everybody goodbye, guess we are all through. Sea washed over the deck load Thursday, leaking bad. Engwald and Steed fell overboard Thursday, God help us. Another bottled goodbye gave new details. These lines were written at 10.30 p.m., schooner Rouse Simmons ready to go down about 20 miles southeast of Twin River Point between 15 and 20 miles offshore. All hands lashed to one line, goodbye, Captain Charles Nelson. Donations and a substitute ship for the Simmons helped Barbara Schunemann make the $15,000 owed from the year's harvest. That next year, her daughter Elsie visited the local newspapers with a press release reminding reporters of their loss. Quote, you see, I am Elsie Schunemann, the eldest of the three children. We are taking up father's work just where he left off, close quote. News coverage and an empathetic public pushed the Schunemans to become the largest distributor of trees into the 1930s. The family used any sailing ship they could find to bring trees in, but eventually went to the railroad for help bringing cheer to Chicago. Four decades later, Kent Bell Richard found the Christmas tree ship off Two Rivers. It still had decaying Christmas trees on board. I hope you enjoyed this story. If you'd like to learn more about the Christmas tree ships, pick up my new book. It's called Bottled Goodbyes. You can find it at lakefury.com. And to all of you, happy holidays.